Hey everybody, it's Gamer Gramps here. Today we are finally going to be finishing off our Religious Science playthrough. It's been way too long. I'm sorry it took me this long to finally finish it, but we are here and we're just going to get her done. If you want to get good at Civ 6, subscribe and hit the bell to keep up with this channel. Much as our ancestors did ages ago, we thrust forward into the unknown. The first pioneers set forth on an uneasy course. And yet once again did our people thrive. Now, under your leadership, we plot a new course. And make another world our own. All right, so there we go. Yippee ki -yay. All right, so we managed to do it on turn 202. Now, basically what ended up happening, I want to apologize, obviously, because I, I feel bad it took me so long to get this out. What I had intended to do, originally I had played through the, the game originally and I ended up winning on turn 204 the first time I played through the game I had the whole all of, all the videos were done and they were all filmed relatively like over the period of, of sorry relatively at the same time over the period of like a, a few days and that was way back in August and September whatever it was when I had originally done it then when I took my break from YouTube because I was going through a bunch of shit at the time and then when I came back it, in this year in January I had bought a whole bunch of new stuff in order to upgrade my sound like the quality of sound in all my videos which made a huge difference like before it like it it used to be really loud and it, it sounded like tinny almost like if you <laughs> if you weren't there for that part of it then then don't worry about it anywho what ended up happening is when I I got all the new equipment and I finally started making new videos again in the new year I went back to continue the series and I went back to edit it and it just frustrated me so much having the tinny shitty audio that I got pissed off and I was just like fuck it and I literally deleted all the footage that I had left because I didn't want to deal with it. It was just irritating me at the time. And when I did that, I had planned to go back like I did here. I had a save file from turn 100, which was like eight turns before the end of the previous episode to this point. So it was like eight turns before the end of episode eight, it would be. So anyway, what I intended to do was to take that save file, like at turn 100 or whatever, and then I was going to replay through the game again and refilm the end of the series so that the, the audio portion didn't irritate me the way it did. However, what ended up happening was I went back and I went back to the original Chinese player who I'll tab over here. So this is the original Chinese player here. His name's Rogue Star, who came up with this strategy, um, and you can see it, it's the video series is hosted on this BillyBilly.com, and it's all in Chinese. So, like Google tr translation here helped me out a little bit. However, when I er had originally watched through his playthrough, I didn't notice this little section here at the side, where it goes and it, it shows you. Um, the different turns so like here I had this link and this is what I was using where there there was eight different links and it says part one part two part three part four all the way to the end to the part eight ending right so that's what I watched and like uh, I was getting irritated when I watched it the first time because there'd be jump cuts from like fucking like 20 turns like apart like from the episode or, or the end of episode four to the end of episode five or to the beginning sorry of episode five there'd be like 20 turns missing and i was like what the fuck like how like where did it go but i mean beggars can't be choosers right <laughs> so i was like oh right well i'll learn the, his strategy as best as i could well that was because i completely missed out that on certain ones of these not every single part but on certain parts there's this second little section here so this is part eight this is like th this video is the only video that I watched the first time around but meanwhile there is 
all these other videos here that you can you can watch through that aren't on the main link list that I was looking at here. And because it's different than YouTube, I wasn't completely familiar with this. Um, and so basically what I had watched seven hours of this Chinese guy playing the first time, speaking Chinese, everything's in Chinese. Um, there's actually almost 20 hours of footage of him playing this game. And to win in 161 turns and so I went back a second time now and I rewatched it in it, the entirety and so I learned a lot more I took a lot more detailed notes and I'm like fuck you know I, I really think I can do this better and so what I want to do is I'm gonna play another game from scratch with this strategy so that's why I'm doing kind of a recap video here. I know this is a bit long-winded. I'm sorry. I ramble. It's who I am. Uh, hopefully, I can edit it down so it's some, somewhat coherent for you. But anyway, what I'm going to do here is basically make an overview, like a quick overview. Because I do eventually plan to do um, like an overview video of the entire strategy and walk everything through like... Uh, age by age the different things you should be trying to do the different technologies you should be pursuing the order of them like general ideas like that and and really have a big overview of the strategy in general but i i want to do another playthrough to for me to get my bearings and for me to learn it better because again like this strategy it the concept is there but you know now i've watched this guy play in chinese for 27 hours it's not like i'm listening to somebody who speaks english and i can understand the, everything that he's doing so i have to learn as best i can from just watching him and then also learn from playing through so that's why i want want to do things differently because like with this game so this is not our original playthrough here because we won on turn 202 here where I the first time I played through I won on turn 204 like the original playthrough uh, so anyway I, I've made so many stake, mistakes throughout this game that now that I've watched it a second time and I've I played through the, the original time that I know that I could do things better and do things differently. I'm not going to redo another playthrough from the beginning on this map. I'm going to do another playthrough on a completely different map. We will still use Japan because they're the best for the strategy. Um, but, like I said, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. <laughs> right now, what I'm going to do is give a quick overview of the different things from basically what we would want to do from where I left off. Like I said, the, the episode 8's ending was turn 107 or something like that. I, I think 107 or 108, whatever it was. Um, but basically, so what you want to do is keep keep going with what we were trying to do. You want your first 8 to 10 cities t settled to have holy sites as their first district unless you need a certain... One, uh, district for a certain tech boost because again you're always trying to get all the different tech boosts in here well clearly you can't see the eurekas now because i've gotten them all but um you're always trying to plan ahead so that you can get the eurekas like you know get three three warriors saved up before you get to the uh, musketman technology so that you can upgrade those three warriors into musketmen which um, having three musketmen is a eureka later in the game so you want to think ahead look through your eurekas because they shave 40 percent off of every every eureka you get is 40 percent off of the time it would take to research that that technology so you literally want to do it for every single one you can especially um, and the same thing for the civics tree, obviously, but it's, that's especially important in for the very late game ones because when you get down to the very end of the game, like in the later stages here, you won't be able to see any of them, but I can at least point to the ones I'm talking about. But like when you get to this point of the game right here, basically the atomic era, all of these different boosts are crazy. Like, so I, for instance, Personally, I never fucking ever, 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 ever build entertainment districts. I have always considered them to be a complete waste because, in my personal opinion, I I just think there's so many more easier ways to keep 
you can still have all of your cities ecstatic to get the growth and production boost that that entails without using entertainment districts. I've always just thought they were complete pieces of shit. Well, I ended up getting four of them in this playthrough because from watching this Chinese player Rogue start play, that's one of the, the boosts in order to get uh, the boost for professional sports, the um, whatever it's called, inspiration, I think, civic inspiration, that sounds right, I don't know, call me stupid if I got it wrong in the comment section, but anyway, um, is build four entertainment complexes is the boost for this one, um, the boost for either rapid deployment is, yeah, the boost for rapid deployment is to own three different air airstrips and have them upgraded to airports so you have to have three different airports or maybe that's globalization yeah that, that one's globalization i think um space races like build the whatever i forget them all i can't remember them all but the point that i'm trying to make is that these civic inspirations in the atomic era, like the late era of the game will literally shave like four and five turns each off of the ending of your game if you do them properly and so that's why it's so important to plan for these things ahead if you've learned a lot from my videos consider supporting the channel by becoming a member there's three different choices that you can choose from all for different prices but for as little as five dollars a month you can help to make this channel successful and ensure that we continue to put out videos that you enjoy like i i've Literally, this is like probably the second or third time I've ever built an entertainment complex the entire time I've ever played Civ 6. So in I think I'm over 800 hours at this point. And I've only done it now because I've watched this guy and, you know, it's that important to do. So what we did was I knew from watching him that it was important. So in the earlier stages of the game, once we got our core districts set up in our cities, like, I think I built one here because this is a bigger city. You can see that I still got... Um, if I put on the emperor, Empire lens here, you can see I already had the, the core districts that were important first. Like, we had, our, we had our campus, we had our holy site, and we had our theater square. And we even had a commercial hub here. Oh, wait, I'm wrong city. <laughs> but, same story, wrong city. You can see the important things. Like, we had, had a theater square, we had the campus, and... So the entertainment complex, and they do have a holy site there too, but we built that entertainment complex and you don't upgrade anything in them, you just get them because you just have to have four of them, right? So it's things like that. So I picked four cities and I did the same thing on them. Like we got entertainment complexes in these cities that didn't matter. Now, another thing that I, do, I think I talked about it in the original playthrough, but I'm not sure if I did, so uh, I'm going to repeat it here. What you really need to do is plan ahead for this city because you want to build the Amundsen Scott Research Center, this wonder right here. It is a crazy powerful wonder, which gives you like 20% science and 10% production boost towards your entire empire when you build it. Um, and so what it needs to be is it needs to be built on snow directly adjacent to uh, a campus. And if you have, if this city has like five snow tiles, it gets a 40% boost to science and 20% boost to um, production. Now, it's only this city that gets that double bonus or any other city that has all those snow tiles, but since you're only going to set a one shitty city, it's only going to be this one. But either way, um, so you always want to plan ahead. So now, in this playthrough, it was convenient because we had cities around there, so it wasn't a far stretch for us to go up there. However, say this wasn't here for us, hypothetically, I mean, when we were playing this, and there was only this right here. See, because I had considered coming down here and then it, it didn't end up working out. But what I would have done is if this was the only option at that time, I would settle it. But what you would do is make a culture alliance with the whatever civilization is surrounding where you're going to go make a cultural alliance with them and then settle it because then you won't have to worry about losing the city to a loyalty flip um however you always want to ideally in a perfect world have four 
at least four forests to chop in order to get this wonder out in time and that is um, you also want to save a great engineer for that so speaking of great engineers that's another thing that I don't normally do like most times almost all the time when I'm playing a science game I don't end up getting industrial zones however this game I changed it and again because I'm following this this guy's how he played the game not how I would normally play the game and so that's why I have industrial zones this time where I I normally don't get them I think I built three in this um yeah three of them and it's because there's a remember I'm saying how I said you want to think ahead and try and target all all of those um Eureka's to, to shave time while there's a Eureka there's one where if you build three workshops it's the Eureka for industrial the industrialization tech so that's why I have three industrial zones um and then there's another one like build two coal power plants or something or build two oil plants I don't know fucking whatever there's a few different Eurekas that all involve industrial zones so that's why I built them um, and I ended up going with the Ruhr Valley here as well because I had a pretty sick city to do it in and it, since I was building it anyway I might as well take advantage of it and um, so we got that done so that is important we covered the basic thing you just want to keep going for your first eight to ten cities you want holy sites in them unless you need a specific district for a specific reason like getting a commercial hub fast for um you know one of those eurekas like build two markets or build two banks or whatever like those are the exceptions but generally you want to go holy site first followed by campus um and then as you get into the, the later cities, like after after basically 10 cities around that point, you don't have to go Holy Site first if, if you want. Like, if it works out, it didn't in this game, but there's um, another... If you get two harbors, there's like a Eureka later in the game that has like build two shipyards to get it. So if it works out well that you have two harbors and you can build it early in, them early enough, um, that's a good thing for you to do as well because... Um, you can get that Eureka again, but it didn't. It didn't work out for me in this game. I only got one harbor um, in time before I came to the before I surpassed that Eureka. Um, other than that, though, so that's the gist of it as far as districts go. Like I said, once you get past that, like round eight to ten holy sites mark, then you can switch your priorities, and that's basically when I started like looking for entertainment units or districts and shit like that um or like theater squares more because culture is really power powerful and it's a necessity in order to get you to certain benchmarks in the game like there's there's certain periods in the game where your culture is more important than your sciences U ultimately the science is more important at the very end but um it kind of ebbs and flows basically anywho um so that is that basically now you want to have two cities now basically you need to make sure that you're saving up enough faith you need 3600 faith in order to purchase a spaceport instantly and so you want to have this done and researched so you need to have moksha your governor like the religious governor um moksha here you need to have him upgraded to divine architect in order to purchase a district with faith before you get to rocketry so like way back in here somewhere yeah right here rocketry so you you want to have him in the city wherever you're going to build your spaceport so we built our first spaceport here in gifu because it had like the high high production um, the other thing you want to do is you want to get an encampment in whatever city you're going to build your first spaceport in. You want to have an encampment. Um, you don't need to have it by rocketry. It's later in the game, but once you get to, I think it's space race. Uh, don't quote me on this. Um, or no, it's a civic. Uh, don't quote me. I think it's space race. It might be Cold War, actually. Um... Ah, yeah, it is Space Race. Okay, so um, you, you want to have, by the time you get to this point in the Civics Tree, you want to have 
your encampment completely upgraded in, in your spaceport city, and that goes the same thing in the second spaceport city. So there's a, a little bit of a difference in the first. It, like, like I said, for the first one, what you want to do is prioritize all your production. Um, so you pick whatever city has the highest production, and that's where you get your first spaceport. Okay, so that's why we chose this one here. And then with your second city, what you want to do is, as you can see, this one's completely chopped and fully developed. It wasn't. So that's what you want to do. For your second city where you're going to build the second spaceport, you don't want to chop anything. You want to leave, you want to pick a city that has lots of stone or lots of forests or a combination of the two, ideally. Because you want to do all the chops like deer tiles like this one's a little bit out of reach but there was a deer tile here i think earlier um deer tiles are also great for production as well because it's essentially like having two forests uh but anywho so what you do is you build your first spaceport in whatever city has the highest production and that helps you get through like you're launching the the satellite your moon landing your mars landing all all the, the first ones and then once you get to, uh, sorry, and then your exoplanet expedition. So you do all of those in this spaceport here. And then what you do is you use this city here the, in the, with the second spaceport. And once you um, launch the exoplanet expedition, hopefully by that time you'll have the, uh, the technology research properly where you have off-world expedition and whatever the fuck another one is there's the two projects that speed up your exoplanet expedition like in this in this playthrough we got screwed pretty heavily because our <coughs> because our our tech that we needed off-world mission was all the way right here so we literally had to get through the entire tech tree before we got it like a lot of times you'll have the because this, this, the future era is all randomized. A lot of time, off-world mission will be like here or like here, whatever, just after Spark Materials, so it works out better. However, in this, it didn't because we had to research everything. So that really, really ended up costing us a lot. Like, I would have finished under turn 200 if it wasn't for this case because we didn't get access to speed up our, our project until it, like, was late in the game i i probably made some mistakes in the playthrough like i said that's why i want to redo it from the beginning on a different map because i i know the strategy a lot more thoroughly now um but anywho so once you get to that tech that uh, i just said off-world mission there so you can launch the the different um city projects to speed up your end game that's when you use this so by that time you've already built up enough faith again like because you'll have a high enough faith economy where you purchase the spaceport here with faith and then you have once you do that you get rid of moksha and get him out of there and you put magnus into your second city and again you want an encampment that's fully upgraded to have a military academy because there's that 15 percent policy card so i'll show you actually we'll do the policy cards afterwards um but where are we so that's what you do you then use all you chop out all these different projects you can get like fucking seven or eight of them out in one turn so you have a whole bunch of builders sitting there waiting and then uh the other thing you do to speed these projects up like the especially all the first ones that we did here in gifu was i don't know if you remember because it was probably a long time ago when you watched the, the previous video but we saved two forests here in our uh, capital where our government plaza was and that's because uh, there's the royal the royal society is the third tier building that you get in your government plaza so it's um, unlocked when you get to democracy that's when you can like the turn you get democracy, you want to have Magnus already established and waiting in your in your city, wherever you ended up building your cap or your government plaza, um, because and you need you want two forests left over or like a stone in a forest, like just two good tiles that you can chop, because then it allows you to chop out your royal society in one turn. Like the turn you get to democracy, 
you already have Magnus sitting there waiting. So you you jump into democracy, then you switch to your royal society, and those two chops that you saved, you already have builders waiting on those two tiles, and you just chop, chop, and you get this instantly, which allows you to st sacrifice builders and provide their production towards a district project, which helps you speed through all of the different space projects here. So that's why um, prior to that, you also want to build up builders, take advantage of the public works policy card that it gives plus 30% production towards builders and two extra charges. And then uh, you literally have like an army of builders just surrounding your spaceport waiting to sacrifice their lives for the better <laughs> betterment of your society. Like you can see I have a few stragglers here <laughs> left over that I was using um, and only one left over here. However, that's pretty much the gist of it. You, Like I said, you want to do everything you can to get... Uh, to get as many Eurekas and Civic Inspirations as you can, you possibly can, because that's really what ends up shaving so much time off of the game, is when you plan ahead and look forward to them. Like like I said, like the, the ones that stand out for me that were are like the four entertainment districts, which I never build, so that was a real eye-opener for me, and it, it was a big difference getting, getting the four of them. And then uh, having the three airports, like I fucking never build airports or airstrips or whatever they're called. Um, I never ever build them, but say there's there's two two different late game Eurekas that have to do with them or civic inspirations, whichever. Uh, but there, there's one that's like have an airstrip on a continent that's not your own, so you need to build three of them. So we, I never ended up finishing this in time. Like I screwed it up. Like I started, I tried. I have an airport here, but I never, I got the air strips, but I never got them completely upgraded in time because you need to actually have three airports in order to get this, the second boost. But the first one was um, have them on your continent, or sorry, have an airstrip built on your continent other than your original. So you, you get one boost for that automatically. And then this, so I would caution you to try that as early as you can or try, try to prepare for that as ahead of time and have three cities ready to go. It, like, basically, as soon as you get to flight, I think it's flight. Um, I'm pretty sure. Anyways, yeah. Like, as soon as you get to flight and you can start airstrips, start your or aerodomes, I guess they're called. Start an aerodome. Um, so that... Or start three of them, rather, so that you have three you have time to get the airports before the Civic Booster Eureka that I, I missed out on there. Other than that, um, big one, big other ones are like, make sure to get at least two commercial hubs. You, It's not so important in this, in re religious strategy as it is in, in normal, or sorry, religious science as it is in normal science because we have our faith economy which we use rather than gold or which we don't use as much however you still want to get commercial hubs and or, or harbors because you want to get trade routes um, it's not as important though in this playthrough you can see we only have six trade routes however like if you do have a chance to build them based on your how your game's layout and how it works out for you it's not a bad thing either obviously because they help you get um, culture, which helps you get through the game, and gold, obviously. Um, yeah, other than that, let's look at the policy cards here. So, you obviously, the, the first main, the most important thing to get to as quickly as you can is democracy, which really unlocks the door, because that then you can start sacrificing your builders, which really speeds you up. But then after you get um, to suffrage and unlock the democracy government, you want to beeline for synthetic technocracy. Um, and that's because not only does it give you plus three power in all cities and plus 30% production towards all city projects, aka your space projects. Um, wait, that's actually the exact reason I want to go there. That's not only, that's the, the fucking reason, is because it gives you plus 30% on all your space projects. That's why you want to get there as quickly as you possibly can. Not to mention it unlocking so many different um, 
policy cards. So here I'll cover the ones that I think are the most important. And I'll kind of briefly go over the reasons why these are the ones you choose. So the five-year plan and rationalism kind of goes without saying, I should think. We're playing a science victory. And so um, that's why those two are slotted in there. The public works, as we talked about, gives you the 30% production towards builders and you get the two extra charges on them. Uh, this is very, very important because you need to build so many builders in this uh, because for the first three in a perfect world, you get golden ages in the classical era, the uh, medieval era, and the renaissance era. Like, in a perfect world, you can string them back to back. I was able to in this game, well, as you saw in the, in the first playthrough. Um, anyway, uh, so you can buy builders and settlers and shit with faith in those three, three ages. However, those three ages end, and then you can't buy them with faith anymore so like it's great if you have a chance to build up some builders and have like a little stockpile that's great however it's not always the case because you have to remember that you have to prioritize having 3600 faith ready and waiting by the time you get to rocketry like that is so important like it's crucial because that way like literally the turn you get to rocketry boom you buy your fucking district your spaceport district with your uh, you buy your spaceport district with Moksha for 3600 faith on like that same turn you get Moksha out of there then and you replace him with Pingala because Pingala has the plus 30% towards space projects and then you start on your space project on the first one right away um, it's just it's, it's very 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 fucking crucial um, anywho Let's continue on here. So the military policies that I have slotted in, this is the most important one here. Logistics is just for um, to make it easier for my builders where I'm building them all over my empire for them to get to the two different spaceports faster. So uh, the plus one movement, if starting a turn in friendly territory, is nice. This is the one I was talking about there. You get plus 15% production towards space race projects if a city has either a military academy or a seaport. So again, this would be if remember i talked about how having two harbors if you can fit it in and work it out early enough where you get that boost for like having two shipyards i think it is is a eureka well if that one if one of those cities happens to be um your first spaceport city or even your second spaceport city actually that would work out here because it doesn't have to be a military academy like i used like, so, where I was saying, you know, get encampments in your two spaceport cities. That was because those were, cities were landlocked. If one of those cities happened to be on the coast, and I would have built a harbor there ahead of time, I would not need an encampment. Because the only reason I got that encampment was so that you could completely upgrade the encampment all the way and get to the military academy for this percentage boost. So that would be an ulterior thing that could you could possibly do on your play style. Um, other than that, keeping it along here, so I have e-commerce e for plus two production and plus five gold from all trade routes, just for some extra production and extra gold income. Uh, it's that this one here is not really important by any means. I just slotted it in there. Um, the most important ones, in my opinion, are obviously rationalism and five-year plan. Obviously, public works obviously this integrated space cell. Now, also these two are very, very important as well. The quicker you can get to them, the better. You have plus 5% culture per city-state you're the suzerain of, and then the vice versa for the science, which is great. Now, this is another very powerful one as well, cryptography. So, enemy spy level is reduced by 2 in your lands. Your spy level is increased by 1 for offensive operations. Um, and then I have Machiavelli uh, Machiavellianism in slotted in. This is because I, I have like five spies available that's because one of mine died just like a couple turns ago <laughs> um because it's so it, like they're just so handy for getting you money to, to which you can use to buy buy stuff in the late game like spies are just crucially awesome i always try and max out as many as i can and this if you're going to be building a spy you want to have this policy card slotted in while you're building it to save you the 50 percent but it's also handy 
like all my supplies are already built but the 25 percent less operations time is actually pretty handy it basically increases your income because they can steal money for you faster um but this cryptography one is the more important one this was just con a convenient thing basically um and now it's because enemy spy level is reduced by two in your lands and your spy level is increased by one for offensive operations it's more important for the spy level being reduced by two in your lands because you want to be defensive um and then i have the democrat or democratic legacy here for the plus four food and production for trade routes to allies and then i have the whistle bank in, in there for the same thing except for just plus two and plus two so each trade route to our allies gives us plus six food and plus six production in the city um, that's another thing when you are doing so building up to the point where you're getting towards rocketry like prior to rocketry in the like 15 or 20 or so turns beforehand you want to stop like i originally had trade routes like all over like i would pick like a weak city and, and have them there however you want them basically to all be in your spaceport city when you start working on spaceports so like i had all six trade routes that we had active leaving gifu so i had at the time all six of them were giving me plus two plus two because i had that whistle banking in that early and then I didn't have democracy when I got to um, rocketry. I got there first. So that was a little bit, it didn't work out properly. But that was, again, an error on my part when I was playing through because I didn't have, like, I, I didn't know to do that. So that is another little thing there. Now, I think that pretty much covers all of them. Um, yeah, that covers all of that fun stuff. We cover the spaceports, we cover the districts. Uh, I think that's the gist of it off the top of my head. Um, pretty much. Okay, so uh, wonders, I guess. We haven't talked about wonders. Alright, so the most important wonders are this one right here so the Kilwa Kisawani wonder it is unlocked in relatively early it's in the medieval era so it's right here when oops not it's before printing um, in machinery is where you unlock it so it is huge here because, like you said, you, if you're suzerain of two or more city-states of the same type, so you can see in this game, we had two science city-states. Uh, the one thing that really slowed this down is there was no cultural city-states in this game. Like, if there was a cultural city-state or two, oh my god, we would have finished so much sooner, but whatever like it's not always a perfect game right um so you can see that we are the suzerain of both baloney and uh geneva here so we had building this wonder gives us plus 15 percent science throughout our entire empire so that is huge and it, it works so much better like if you're if you have two religious things and two science things and two cultural things, you'd be fucking set. Like, this one wonder would literally give you plus 15% science, plus 15% religion, and plus 15% uh, culture throughout your entire empire for the rest of the game from the medieval era. Like, it's, it, I cannot overstate how important this wonder is. Um, and so you need to plan ahead for it. So the thing you need to plan ahead for is it needs to be built on the coast. That's it. It can be built on hills. It can be built on flatland. It doesn't matter what tile. I, I don't think anyways. I think it can be built on snow. Anyway, whatever. Double check for yourself. Don't quote me on that. However, it's hugely important. So you kind of got to play around with that. It works out well because of our culture game is fast too because what you need to do and what you want to do is ahead of time here um, is 
Yeah, because you want to get to divine right beforehand. And because our culture game is so powerful and we're coming down here for theology in order to get scripture and stuff to um, at that point in the game anyways, is uh, you want to get to divine right because not because of monarchy, but because of Gothic architecture. Because you want to have this policy card in here when you start building or chopping that wonder out, essentially. So... Uh, double check that you make sure you get here before you start building that otherwise you're just wasting like wasting chops and you always want to be as efficient as you can and that is such a huge wonder other than that uh the Ruhr valley is nice if you do have a good spot in whatever city you're going to build um your spaceport in like we had a great spot here like look at all all that like the production here in the city is 137.7 so not too shabby at all um that is another nice wonder but the, like Kilwa Kis Kisawani is the most important wonder in the game as far as I'm concerned other than the uh, Amundsen Scott research station which we already talked about um but that one comes really late game that Kilwa is so so important because it comes at such an early point in the game and it's so powerful other than that um the Oracle here is another really powerful wonder in the early game. Now, um, I went a little bit overboard with wonders, I think, in this first playthrough. Like, I I really don't think Apadana is that important. Um, it, it's better in culture victories with, than it is in science. Um, the Taj Mahal we did grab that's a decent one it's not super important but if you have um, either great engineers that can boost your wonders you want to save the um, there's a great engineer that gives 215 points towards your wonder completion if you get him you can use him on whatever wonder you really like it doesn't matter but you want to save the 315 hammer engineer guy for your um, for your wonder the Amunds and Scott wonder you want to have him ready and waiting here for when you unlock um, the technology or the civic sorry in order to get the, this the, the rapid deployment or whatever it's called because uh, you will not chances are I should say chances are at least we didn't because we didn't have any cultural city states in the game so you might get there on time if you do have the culture one I'm not sure but uh, anywho uh, you you won't get the engineer that gives you 415 hammers towards your wonder in time to get by the time you get to that wonder so I would suggest saving that engineer other than that the Oxford, or sorry, the Forbidden Palace is another very important wonder to try and get. I forget where I built it. I know I built it somewhere. I don't care enough to look. But anyways, the Forbidden Palace is another one, and it works out really good because it, we're already coming to machinery for the Kilwak Kisimwani. So it, the Forbidden Palace is just unlocked right here in, or Forbidden City, sorry, in printing. So it gives you a, an extra plus one wildcard policy. Or gives you an extra plus one wildcard policy slot. There you go. Um, the Patala Palace is another convenient one. If you can get it, go for it. Uh, plus two culture and plus three faith, which isn't important, but it gives you a plus one diplomatic policy slot. So, like, that's why you can see I have so many extra policy slots here. It's because I have an extra diplomatic one and I have an extra wildcard policy. Because normally I would be. Two, I'd have two less policies to choose from. And then the Taj Mahal, like I said, it's not that important. It's it's convenient because it really helps you string the Golden Ages along. Um, so that's why we grabbed that. Other than that, the, uh, the Oxford University is another important one. However, you want it to leave it until later in the game. Basically, you want to build it and leave it on one turn remaining. And leave it until you get up to the technology parts um, later in the game where the boosts it's going to give you are going to be really important. Because you're, you're going to be so far ahead 
or you should be, I should say, not you're going to be. You should be so far ahead of the competition, even on DD difficulty like I play on, where, because it's not, where is it? It's in scientific theory. The Oxford University isn't until the industrial area. era. By the time the AIs, and you can watch for this, so you know you're not going to get sniped on it or anything like that, you can watch where they are. Like, if, if you look at this, I'm in the future era, the closest one to me is in the modern era. Right? So the closest one to me is right here, now, at the end of the game. So you can imagine, when I was here at the industrial era, that they were considerably farther back right so you start building it chop it down to like to one right and then leave it because like you said it awards two randomly chosen free technologies when completed now that's randomly chosen so you leave it for as long as you can so that you backfill all this other shit here right so that when it does give you the two technologies that you're as far up in the tech tree as you can be so that the two technologies it gives you is going to be cutting your time off that much faster, right? So again, once you have it down to one turn, just sit there and watch and pay attention for when your competition catches up with you and once they, whatever, once one of them gets into the industrial era, just pay attention for that and then you pop it and that way you have as many of these backfilled like I said and that way you'll get as much bang for your buck from the actual uh, wonder itself and then that's pretty much it I think as far as the wonders go as well I think I pretty much covered everything here um, after your cities get to 10 population that's the important number because of the boost to your rationalism and prior to this like when we were still in our um, when we were still in the golden ages where we could buy units with faith uh, we had scripture for the boost to faith and then this the uh, simultaneum or simultaneum whatever the frick it's called here um, whatever anyways the one that, that basically rationalism for religion uh, you want to get as many cities to 10 population as you possibly can and that's because it gives you that extra plus 50% production to all of your religious or in this case now science buildings um, so once your cities get to 10 population though, that's the important part then after that make sure that you manage your citizens as you can see here uh, I don't have three in in this campus right now because that campus was damaged and when like I literally just repaired this campus here in the last few turns and so I didn't come back I didn't think to come back in and bump it up but if you look in any of my other cities that are at 10 population uh, you can see there you go like our campus is completely researched and we have three people locked in there um, and so you want to do that as soon as your cities hit 10 population because that way you're going to get the most bang for your buck out of that policy card whether it's your religious one to give you more faith or whether it's your science one like whether it's rationalism or simultaneum whatever um, you want to have your citizens working the actual thing once you get to 10 population it's 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 very very important i can't stress enough how how much of a boost that actually does give you um not to mention that's the only thing you really need population for is getting to 10 like that's the biggest point um the most important population marker in the game like if you get one city up to 15 for the tech boost that's great other than that just 10 population is the goal you want to hit for as you can see we weren't lucky enough to get it in all of our cities but i mean that's the way it works out you can't have them all be gems um but yeah i think that's about it so i'm going to just shut up now but basically again i am going to do another playthrough of this strategy so on the channel i'm just thinking where we are right now i just finished uploading the, the other day i just finished uploading the last of our brazil playthrough our brazil religious playthrough um 
so that's completely done now this series is completely done with this wrap-up video I'm gonna be starting a brand new series this week I've already been filming it um, off offline over the, the past while and I should be finished that up like I think today or tomorrow at the, the worst case scenario I should have that game completely wrapped up um, it's gonna be a culture game with Sweden um, we're playing and after that series, I will be going back into a religious science series with Japan on a different map and trying to do this all over again with a bunch more experience behind me now that I've not only played through a couple different games with it on my own to learn the ins and outs of the strategy better, but also had I had went back, like I said, I fucking spent another 20 hours watching this Chinese guy play through a complete second time and I took a lot of detailed notes a lot better notes than I did the first time around um, and because I got to see all that like like I said I only watched seven hours of the guy play the first time around so it was basically like uh, anyway long story short I know the strategy a lot better so I'll be able to teach it a lot better and I won't make a lot of the same mistakes that I did and that's the most important reason why I wanted to go back and make another playthrough of it because even in the, in the videos of this series in the early stages I made quite a few different errors in the early game that I would have done differently in hindsight now that I know the strategy better and not only just because it, of this map and that's why it's important that like it's not only this map that this works on so I want I want to do it on a completely different map that I haven't played before um, so it's completely fresh, but I can still improve the strategy and redo the the, the things that I, I screwed up in this, this playthrough of the game. Um, but yeah, I've rambled enough. I'm going to shut up now, and so thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please do me a favor. Leave a like on the video. Better yet, a comment down below as well. I'd love to hear from you. Like I always say, call me an asshole. I don't care. <laughs> Just whatever. All the engagement helps a small channel like me get discovered. But, uh, yeah, I'm just going to shut up now. So I'll see you in the next video.